In the late 20th century, a group of Canadian union members were feeling the impact of change in a big way. Change in the economy, in their sector, and in their workplace. Even their union was changing in a way that they did not support. So they went looking for an alternative, and the rest, as they say, is history. Hello, my name is Janet Stewart, and I'm a proud member of the Canadian Union of Skilled Workers. Welcome to another 21st Century Insight. American unions started to adopt a business model late in the 20th century. Many of them acted like employment agencies, supplying workers to employers and collecting fees in return. This model eventually failed for a simple reason. Workers lost confidence in the entities that had been created by and for them. They didn't think the unions provided them with a voice about the future of the workplace, so they gave up their memberships in droves. In 2013, Time magazine reported that union membership was at a 97-year low. Only a little more than 11% of U.S. workers belonged to a union at that time. In the private sector, union membership fell to 6.6%, down from 35% in the 1950s. Time also linked the decline in union membership to rising levels of inequality and the concentration of wealth. Such high levels, the magazine said, last occurred just before the Great Depression. Clearly, the moment was right for another union model to emerge. In 1999, the Canadian Union of Skilled Workers was formed as an alternative to unions that left little or no room for member participation. Labour laws in both Canada and the United States provide a legal framework for workers to make their voices heard. But here's the difficulty. When workers don't support unions, Rights that were won, sometimes at a great cost, lie dormant. No one benefits from them. So who is responsible for inequality in our society? Well, perhaps workers should look at themselves first before they assign blame. Workers left unions because they felt they had no voice. But they were also alienated because they didn't feel connected to their unions. It's easy for members to view business-style unions as third-party service providers. Employers can use that gap to convince workers their union isn't providing them with any benefit. We can stop this sabotage. All it takes is knowing that our interests are served by working together with employers as a recognized body of workers with a voice. That's when we will truly have a say in the future of work. How can we get there? We can do it by engaging fully as members of our union. We need to see ourselves in the fabric of CUSW. We need to look beyond short-term gain and self-gratification. And we need to question the status quo. A union that adopts a business model just to survive is built on shifting sand. A union built by and for its members has a much more solid foundation. We know how to do it, and we are doing it. We are building a union that responds to our needs. The solution to workplace conflict is to have workers, worker representatives, and employers discuss issues of concern while in the workplace. Would you believe a labor relations expert came to that conclusion more than a century ago? Why then did the concept of a harmony of interests fail to catch on? And what can we do as CUSW members to take up the challenge today? You can find out by watching the next episode of the 21st Century Insights. Bye for now.